what else do you think is contributing to inflation outside of the whole supply and demand thing? Trillions of dollars being dumped into the economy. You're seeing the stock prices come down. This is like a self-induced recession on purpose. So I think the conversation starts with inflation and the prices of everything being out of control. And what you talk about all the time, we made a video a couple uh, a couple episodes back where inflation was up, I don't know, 6.5%, whatever it was, whatever the yeah. number was. Yeah. And you're like, well, based on the cost of these things, it's up way more than that. Yeah. So, so walk people through what you, what you have on your screen and, and the cost of things. So it, it's funny, right? So, and, and I was telling you, I'm like, I think the theme today is, is it's obviously starting middle and ending with inflation, yeah, which is really driving everything right now, but it's also confusion and, and I'll get into that. But, yeah. um, you know, we we're talking about a, uh, two months ago, right? And it was like six and a half percent. It we're like, this is a 30 year high for inflation. Like, think about it. You're going back to like the eighties. Right. Right. When people are oh, I'm paying 18% on my, you know, my home, my yeah. colonial and you know, that kind of thing. And, and now here we are, we're at seven and a half percent inflation two months later, which now goes back to the highest it's been in 40 years, which is like, it's unfortunate. We should know who the president was then, yeah. but I can't, I don't remember anything before the old George Bush. Oh, it was Ronald Reagan. There you go. How and I don't remember. That? Yeah, well, we're too young. But anyway, but so so that's what I'm saying. Like, but those were like, like, if you just think about historic times of like really high inflation and high interest rates and crazy stuff going on with that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you're going back to like the Ronald Reagan, like the early George Bush before they had to really lower the rates because we were pushing ourselves into a recession with pricing and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, well, but your point though, like when you're getting to these prices, is yes, inflation has a per, like a number on it, like specifically. Right. But when you look at the price of things year over year over the past five or 10 years, it's way higher than the 7.4%, whatever the number is. 100%. And, yeah. and so even if you, so they always say like, we'll strip out one and a half percent for food and energy, right? So mm -hmm. if things only increase 6%, like we would be in pretty good shape. I'm or even seven and a half percent. Like yeah. if gas only went up by seven and a half percent, or if no one would be the, saying a the, word. The price of chicken was only yeah. seven and a half percent. So, so if you look at it, so this this was published on um, MSNBC. Okay, is where, is where everybody got this from, and I saw it going around. But it says uh, used car prices. This is year over year. Okay, right? so Perfect. from last year to this year, and, and there's some important to touch on. So, the year over year number. So, last year in January. You got to think where we were, right? We yep. weren't. We weren't even back in Michigan. We weren't even back in school, right? Right. We were totally still on lockdown. Yeah, yeah that's right. So we're doing. So we're comparing inflation from then to now. Okay. Okay. So we're we're comparing like the the gap is huge because that was before infl inflation really started to get crazy. Absolutely. More stimulus was coming out after this, right? So I'll, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But what they're saying is that used car prices year over year are up forty percent. Yep. Uh, crazy. fuel is up 40% meats, fish and eggs increased 12%. I still feel like that's bullshit. Like I feel yeah. like my chicken's so expensive, but whatever. Uh, new car prices are up 12%. So that's something to think about too. And, and I don't know if it's new car prices are up 12% or how it goes. Uh, but I was looking at a, a Ford dealership. I'm like, I'm thinking I want to order a Bronco, yeah. one of the cool ones, right? Later on. And uh, so I was like, I want to drive one I don't one know first. why you want a Bronco, but okay. They got the Raptor one. They're not that cool. Dude, I'm going to jump it. Okay. I'm going to jump over That's something. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but so I was looking, they, they have one on their website. I'm like, oh, cool. I can go see if I fit. I'm a bigger dude. And uh, so I looked at the sticker price on it. It was 58355 MSRP with destination charge. And you're like, that's right. not bad. I was like, that's okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I looked at the price on the website. It said 79995 brand new at the dealership. And I'm Crazy. like, so then I saw this from MSNBC yesterday. I'm like, damn, is $20,000 only 12% of $58,000? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, 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 that's like twenty five. Yeah. You so know? to your point and what I was saying earlier, the, the actual inflation numbers being uh, displayed yeah. is not like indicative of prices. No, it's not. It's not even close. <laughs> it's not even close. No, that's and that's the and that's why I say it's confusion, right? So yeah. then there was a press conference yesterday, uh, or maybe on Wednesday, where um, Biden was presented with, and and it was a it was a reporter that was giving him a hard time. They they yeah. bust his. The problem is, and, and you'd think like the president of the United States would get public relations, but like he went through this phase where he wouldn't ask any, he wouldn't answer any questions from the press. Yeah. So now when the press act, asks him questions. They're all being smart asses to him because he ruined that, you right. know, rather than like doing the hard stuff and saying, I don't know, like, let me check my, my facts and yeah. I'll get back. Doing what we would do, right? Right, right, as, right. As normal humans. 
So uh, he's like, oh, you're somebody's like, Joe, what do you think about the inflation numbers? And he's like, oh, this is because of supply chain issues. Yeah. Like he's still on the supply chain issue mm-hmm. thing. And um, it just goes back to the confusion. Like it's it, like you would like the supply chain issue thing started before last Christmas. Yeah. Like over a year ago, like in this day and age, like how can a country like the United States with, in the world economy, like supply chain issue, it's beyond that. So right now with the demand for things. Tell tell me what what else you think is contributing to to inflation outside of supply chain and you know the whole supply and demand thing. Trillions of dollars being dumped into the economy for and and I'm not saying that a lot of people didn't need it but a lot of people didn't need it. Right. You know like I always use the example I have it's a true. neighbor I have a neighbor he works at General Motors and lives in a pretty nice house and he's been there for a long time. He's probably like 120,000 a year salary job. Okay. They have eight kids, okay? A lot of kids. And the wife, his wife doesn't work. Well, stimulus came out. We saw two, and I'm not kidding. I'm not just making it up. They have two new cars. They're cars I would never pick. I, who buys a bright red van and an electric blue pickup truck? It's like, they went to the, like, do you have any of these on the lot that aren't selling? Right. Like, we'll take we'll those. We'll take those, yeah. yeah. So, and then they got a jet ski. Yeah. So, if you think about it, I was doing the math, and from the two stimulus plans, they got $60,000 or more in stimulus money that was tax free. Yeah. So you're like, where's you know, it's a supply chain issue. No, it's not. It's because people that make one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year got one hundred and fifty percent raise that year for no reason. Like he still worked his same role at General Motors. General Motors was still giving the same profit sharing checks. So hold on. So before we before we hit record, you know, we were just talking about like um, where we get a lot of our information and, and people like gumping things down yeah. and making them simple. Yeah. I, I want you to give some context to people that watch this and say, yeah, we, we, we understand like we yeah. were, we benefited from that too. Right. How that translate into increased inflation. Okay. It, it's simple. It's supply and demand, right? So you have a bunch of people out there that are told when we talked about this, right? Don't work. Yeah. Stay home. We're going to give you some money. And we're going to ask that you spend that money. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is, is you have, so there was a supply chain issue. There's That's not what a, I'm saying. I go back to supply chain. So there is a supply chain yeah. issue, but the problem, and, and supply chain issues happen all the time. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a whole new supply chain issue coming and that's, that's what's going on in Canada. Right. So, the, but, but, but it's for a specific reason. It's yeah. Like, yeah. For that. But here's, here's the thing. So you have, we have a supply chain issue, which within 18 months should be solved. The the problem that, the reason we can't I like solve that plug. We're just where'd you our, get that from? We the problem the reason we can't solve that is because we took trillions of dollars and said go spend the money. Like people were given stimulus money and they were told to put it into the economy. So we put billions and oh, billions of dollars. So spending went up that much. Got it. So you're 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 suggesting okay because spending went up so much yeah. that it, it isn't necessarily the supply chain not being able to get products and goods yeah. as much as it is it, demand. It, it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's both. It's DFD. It's, it's both. You know what DFD is? What? Demand for dumb shit. Oh, and that's I'll tell good. you why. Did you make that up? Just now. So here's why, right? So if you get, so if you go out, right, yeah. and you're coaching and doing all your things and yeah. you make $5,000, okay. right? That 5000 and then you go to, say you go to Best Buy and you're like, man, you know, I got all these TVs in my house, but this one TV is super sick and it's two grand. Yeah. You're like- I worked hard for my five grand. I'm not buying that. Like yeah. my TVs are fine. I, I don't it. need a TV. But if Uncle Joe Gave sends five you five grand, grand and you're point. not working and yeah. you're staying home and you've got Apple TV and it's streaming, you're like, I need an ultra high definition Samsung organic TV. Do me a favor. All you know right. What I'm I want to. I want to. I want to just put some context around that. Yeah. Google like something. Cause I want to see, I want to actually look at the demand specifically with numbers, right? So okay. like, let's take, you know, number of car sales. Let's look at a product. It doesn't have to be cars. It could okay. be, um, you know, um, iPhones. Okay. All right. So let's just see the number of, of sales. That should be easy to find for 2020, okay. 2021. And then let's just look at the difference to see if the demand, cause I think it's, I'm more on the side of supply chain more so than on the demand side. I think that's a bigger contributor to our inflation issues. But let's see if you can find some numbers for us. I, I don't know if iPhone is, is the best way to do it for Any one. product you want. I yeah, don't care. Yeah. Okay, all right. So let's do number of, I don't know. what's something You want to like? look at poultry sales. You want to look at uh, cars. I mean, cars is the big talk of the town, like the used cars. All right. 
I, I'm I'm just more of a belief because I in the re, I'm in the real estate space, Steve. Yeah, I'm just more of a believer of that the supply is more of the issue than demand being the issue. I'm I'm more on that yeah. side when it comes to inflation than than the demand. But I wanted to see if we can do any I, comparison. I don't know what you're wanting me to search here. I think. Well, well, okay. So you took the prices of like. So I'm looking at. So here's here's a DFD. Yeah. Dyson vacuums. Fine. They Whatever cost triple of a sharp. But the right? argument but you're making, I can't find. Yeah. The argument you're making. The, you you said well you saying the trillions of dollars getting pumped in the economy the demand you said is a bigger contributor to inflation than the supply chain yes I'm asking for evidence I don't have that evidence right oh okay <laughs> my my point well, exactly I mean to to Google it but it, and you can say I mean for sure it's supply chain but it's why is there a supply chain issue because we, we talk about it because nobody there's demand no you think it's because nobody wants to work absolutely but our unemployment rates are at below pre-pandemic levels. People are paying more money now than they've ever paid ever for employer. Yes. And yet, they're, everybody is hiring. It is absolutely insane, including ourselves. Right. And it is so hard to find people for whatever reason. I have no idea. That's unexplainable to me. I don't know how people got... Maybe this is a contributor to people getting all the free money yeah, that yeah. they don't have to work. This what caused the great... Um, what are they calling it? The great... Uh, People leaving work, the great, not recession. The great exit. I forget what. I yeah, know you know what I'm talking the about. The great right? resignation. The great resignation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Early retirements yeah, are like yeah. all-time highs. So, people going correct. on to their own businesses are at all-time exactly. highs. Exactly. Yeah. So to me, that's one major cause of this supply stuff. Um, and then there's all kinds of other things too. The break, the right. broken railroad because of, of lumber prices. And so to me, the supply chain is a bigger issue than the demand. Not that the demand isn't high. It's fair, yeah. But but I, I would say there's more evidence to support that, like, we can't get stuff to people, and so, therefore, prices are way more expensive for it. I think yeah. that's the bigger issue. That's fair. I think we can agree. I, I, I'm more of a demand issue only because of th – this is what we warn people about. I mean, there's so many different ways oh, people something. are getting money right now. I got a mic drop for you. Oh, go ahead. Of your Don't own – Don't drop your mic, though, because we broke Of your own report. information. Yeah. You know what you told me at breakfast this morning? What? You said, he said these exact words. Here comes a lie. I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to be <laughs> no, I'm exact. Just yeah, good. You have, I think the number is 30 clients looking for houses. There's your demand. Right. Tons of people, yep. right? And you said there's no houses for them to get. Yes. So that's a supply problem. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, again, I, and I'm with you. I, I'm not <laughs> saying that there's not a supply issue. I think that the supply issue is is going as long as it is because there's such a demand it's uh, because people are because there's a couple it's, things that we're saying both. wage because wage growth is way up as well yeah so that's right. a, that's one of the things that we're looking at the problem is is that inflation is outpacing wage growth which is called the misery index is that space between yeah it's kind of funny because that, that is, is a miserable place to be it's a dave matthew song um too. but yeah i i mean you, you could say i mean i i think i think we're both right i think that the demand for things is causing the supply issue and it's not allowing the supply issue to get any better. Yeah. And, and I mean, there, there's a number of factors. And I, I think a lot of it is is a bit of our own fault. And it, and it comes from pumping so much money into our economy for fear of, of a recession and letting the market do its own thing. That now and now. Yeah, let's talk about. Okay, so yeah. so that's a pass. So that's yeah. a great segue. What Where are we going now? So now we're going to a path of what they call quantitative tightening, right? So the government, we talk about this all the time. They went to the Fed, went to their toolbox, and they did everything to make it to put as much money in as Americans' pockets as we can so we can buy as much product Stuff. as we possibly can so supply can never catch up, which just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, uh, and so now, so now the government's coming back and they're tightening that. So what's happening now is like you're seeing the stock prices come down. Right. The Federal Reserve, it, it's funny because they – I mean, these are people that have read more books about history than anybody there is because economics is all a theory, right? Sure. So all you can look at what people have done in the past and you try to do the same thing. And what happens is the Fed, every time inflation gets really high, the Fed acts swiftly. Yep. They raise rates really fast. They let balance sheets run off really fast. And everybody gets concerned because the Fed only meets eight times a year, right? So the next meeting's in, in the middle of March. And so they're all, because they wait between these meetings and inflation just keeps getting worse, it's like, Remember when the pandemic happened? You'd sit yeah. home and read it, read the news, how yeah. bad it was. Then you'd go to the grocery store. Like, dude, people are still saying hi to me. I and know. Like, people like chocolate it's milk so still. True. Yeah. So the Fed, they just sit there and, and they're going through all this data rather than taking any action. And then when they do, it's like, you know, the market gets smacked with what they're going to do. 
but it's like preparing for it and it's all the hype leading up to it that when the Fed actually acts, it's not as bad as you think and you see improvement in the market. Yeah, so that's a good point. And I do want to give a little bit more of context around the, the video we made last week that yeah. people had questions on. I think I titled that video and people thought it was like clickbait. I'm like, no, this is like a self-induced recession on purpose that the Fed is getting yeah. it. So, so I want you to kind of tell the help the audience understand when you say Fed acts quickly, raises interest rates to fix inflation, the everyday Joe has a hard time understanding why that is. How come that helps inflation by taking money out of the economy? Right. So, I mean, there's there's a number of things they do, uh, but raising but raising the Fed funds rate, yeah. which which really messes with the whole global economy. Right. I and mean, there's other things they can do that the world would rather we didn't do because they don't want to mess up their own economy. So they're chirping in the Fed's ear. But basically. The Fed has a Fed funds rate, yep. right? And, and the way that works is banks are required to have a certain amount of assets to cover their loans, right? Yep. And at the end of the day, when that bank closes on a Tuesday, if they have more assets than they need to cover their loans, they can lend that money overnight to large corporations or to other banks, and then that money gets paid back very quickly, like sometimes the next day. Sure. And so what happens is if it's 0%, you have all these companies that can grow really fast because they can get this capital infusion with no cost of their money. Right, right. So what happens is, and that that leads to innovation. It allows them to push more product, allows them to raise wages, and they just have more money in their pocket to spend, right? Yeah. Would, so would, it, this is great, by the way. Keep going. This is because so far, everyone, I think, is with you. Like, okay, yeah. cool. Well, how, how does the opposite of that help us? Right. So here's what will happen. So the Fed will raise that rate, which means companies are going to borrow less money. Or if they do borrow money, their return on that investment is going to go down, which will start to lower wage growth. It will lower, it, it'll decrease the innovation of the companies, it'll de decrease their product to the market. De and decrease it'll cause, the amount of money they lend. Exactly. So what that does ideally is that it, it takes these companies' stock prices and it decreases these stock prices. It brings the market down a little bit. And what these companies will eventually do is start lowering their prices to get more people to buy their product. And as, and that's how you work inflation, right? You decrease inflation to get more people to buy things at a lower price. Your money goes further, which means this price of the dollar goes up compared to other currencies. Dude, that was beautiful. So that is a clip that's going to go down in history as one of your best pieces yeah. of content. I hope like hell it was accurate. I, that's my understanding. I mean, the, no, you know, honestly, the, like the easy. That was I, the first time in our show that you explained something that I think that I finally understood that the people yeah. at home finally like, oh wow, Steve, good job. Yeah, thanks. I'm just kidding, I love you. No, no, it's I got all you. Really but good. that's um. That makes but a lot of sense. It. Yeah. Because, and so that's why when I made, we made that other video and I was like, the Fed just put us in a recession on purpose. When you, when you watch this video at home, you can understand it wasn't just clickbait. It was strategic. And so, so the next, let's transition again. Is that still the plan as far as the information we're getting with this next Fed meeting coming up in March? Do we fully anticipate them to raise rates again? And is that the, yeah. the, the direction we keep going? So I, I, my, my opinion is right now, I, I think the first Fed rate hike we're going to see is going to be a 50 basis point rate hike. Okay. And so... Um, and again, when we're the, talking about rates, we're talking about the Fed fund rate. Fed not, funds rate. Yeah, not interest rates. So, right. so here's where it does affect mortgages, though, is that on your, like your home equity lines of credit, right? Yep. Like, again, going back to slowing down how much money we're spending, like... Right now, you can get a home equity line of credit at prime, right? Which is basically the Fed funds rate plus about 3%. Yep. Right? So you get a home equity line of credit right 3%, now. 3%. 3%. Yeah, percent, well, now yeah. it goes to three and a half. Yeah. And then by the end of the year, you're probably going to be at like four to four and a quarter. And people, as much as that doesn't make a difference, right? Right. That, that's literally, if you think about it, right? 3% to 4% on $1,000 is $100 a year. Yeah. It's nothing. And you and it's, I always talk about that. It's not that big of a yeah, deal, right? Sure. So it's that comes out to, I don't know. Twelve dollars a month, whatever yeah. it is, or eight dollars a month. Yeah, and um, but that will, sl but it's it just send people's heads like, okay, interest rates are going up. Right. Like I'm, I need to start like hunker down. It's just a mental thing, yeah. right? Um, and and if you think about it, with your um, with your your title last week as the Fed trying to or as the government trying to crash the economy, they're trying to retract it, right? You know, which can which Recession. is which is fine. They're trying to have them recede. A little bit because Absolutely. they and, and the reason that 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 becomes like a, a controversial or provocative way to put it is because a lot of the sentiment is that we got ourselves here but we infused a whole bunch of money which created all this demand and created all this inflation and now the fed has to come back in and be like all right guys like playtime's over let's do the it's time to let the market 
go back to being a market yeah. rather than yeah. being subsidized. So yeah, that makes, yeah, that's great. And, and the thing is, is like more housing data and how that's going to impact things here as we move through 2022. We'll have more data yeah. as we get through the year. Um, but as it relates to the housing market specifically, even with, with rates going up like they have, right? Yeah. And uh, talk about mortgage interest rates for a second. Like yeah. what's occurred over the last 30 days and where we're at today. Yeah. So so we're up we're up about a point, yeah. right? So we're, you could we're say- We're hovering around 44%. 4%, yep. So we went from, you know, in the holidays and stuff, we would call it like right around three. There's a lot of stuff in the twos, which was amazing. Yep. So we're around two to three, two, high twos, 3%, so we'll call it three. Yep. Today they're at 4%. You know, and, and I was, you and I were talking about it the other day. I was like, this is not, this is not the end of the world. Right. You know, for every, for every $200,000 that you borrow on a 30 year loan, that's a hundred and what was it? It was, no, it was like $50. It was oh, over 200,000. Yeah. 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 200,000 was like a hundred and $112 a month difference. Yeah. 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 Which <clears throat> if you go back and you break that down even further, that's like $4 a day. It's, it's, That's, it's one of these a day, we said. No, these went up too. Those are like 560 now. They, Did you notice that? They, they went from 472 You're, to yeah, 560. That's right. But, so, but it's, a, it's yeah. about a Starbucks coffee a day. Exactly. So yeah. it's it's totally not the end of the world. Right. And it's, and it's certainly not something that's going to slow down the housing market. I don't even think rates at 5% slow down the housing Me market. Me neither. Because the way the way Americans are doing things is different. Yeah. And the, like we're in this position now, and we talk about the crash all the time. We like, I don't know the good, a good way to put it because gas prices fluctuate so much, but gas prices go up a hell of a lot faster than they go down. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh yeah. And, and housing's the same. Like once, that's true. once you're, once you're that's in a, a point. once you're in a, a neighborhood where houses sell for 600 grand, that's now a $600,000 neighborhood yeah. to get into where maybe a year ago it's 500. Yeah. Maybe you'll find one for like 575 in there, but that's roughly a $600,000 neighborhood now. And those things just stay. That's. It would take it would take a big foreclosure crisis or, or something like that to pull that back, and we're seeing right now is that severely. I have the uh, I have the number, so we we but, should pull that up for so sure. So delinquent delinquencies yes. on loans right now are are still really low. So let me see if I yeah you can grab that. And while you're doing that, the, the other thing that you just reminded me of is like with wages being up, like even as rates go to four four and a half five percent. People are making a lot more money now than, yeah. than they were. And yeah. so it's, Wages are up. it yeah. is so insignificant if your monthly mortgage payment at 3% to 4% is $200 difference. Yeah. It's not slowing down the housing market. Yeah. And we continue to get record low inventory levels, yeah. right? right? So demand, we just keep talking about this, as demand stays put, which is really high. Yeah. Mortgage applications, you probably know that, are, are, are in good shape. Yep. And housing inventory is still very low. Yeah. So, so the housing market continues to push forward strong. And there's and there's a lot of data about more. So if you Tons look at data. mortgage applications, yeah. purchase applications are yeah. still very strong. They're down a little bit because we're down on inventory. But I have January a, always is down. I have a theory. January and February. What shocking is shocking series of events? Yeah, I have a new theory that has nothing that we can prove. Okay, uh, but I feel like this holiday season was the first like true holiday season we've really had in like two years. Yeah, where I think people took vacations, they took time right. off. It's true, rather than just being like. We're stuck in, we're just in our house. We're just going to work. We might as well. I think people really like took this as a year. Like, I think 2022, we're going to come out of this. Like, let's do this. Right. So anyway, but I, going back to delinquencies on mortgages. Yep. So, you know, we had all those, remember we we're doing these videos about like the, the forbearance. We're like, right. Well, wait till everybody's payments come due. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Doom, it's, gloom, it's right. doom and gloom. Like get your, get your credit Everyone ready, get your money ready. Like that. Yeah. we are going to come out of this thing. We're going to buy all these foreclosures yeah. and we're pioneers to the new gold mines. Yep. And and so with loans coming out of forbearance and foreclosure, so uh, last month loans 30 days or more behind. Yeah. Uh, we're down 3.8% of mortgages are 30 days behind. And that went down to 3.6%, which if you think about- Was that many, year over year? Month over month. Okay, So again, it. I mean, that's that's peanuts. peanuts I mean, that's very 3.8% yeah. yeah. loss. And the other one is, so seriously delinquent. So this is when we get to 90 plus days. So- in the mortgage world, right. when you're 90 days late, like you're not getting a refi. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you got that 90 day on there. Like, yeah, it's that's a problem. that's a, it's a problem. It's serious. Yeah. It becomes like almost unlendable. Um, that's that's down. That dropped to two percent from two point two percent. So, mortgages are getting back on track, right. and people are making these payments. And again, like we said from the beginning, this this was a uh, an induced. You know, uh, like an, an induced, induced recession. forbearance. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is, you're right, man. I, I remember you just brought my mind right back to it. Like 
all these people on YouTube were making videos about like, wait till all these payments come due. There's yeah. going to be a crisis. The housing market's going to crash. We're going to have all these foreclosures. And it's not. And, and the thing is, we have to look at, I don't know if you have it in your report there, but pre-pandemic levels to, to look at what was the 90-day uh, lates. What did that look like in, you know, yeah. 2018, 19, 20? Yeah. And then what did it look like in 2008 to give yeah. context? Because 2% might not have any context to people watching Yeah, this. yeah. So, and, and I don't have that in front of me and I don't want to do the dead air of trying <laughs> to find it, but um, it's for. everything, everything's like pre-pandemic right now. Okay. I mean, we're in, 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 even in the housing, we're, the forbearance is probably good for a lot of people uh, that were even coming into the pandemic behind on things. I know it's, it's really helped people with student loans. Um, but I have a random thought. I'm going to get off. Go ahead. I'm do it. Digress. Run it. So we're car people and uh, yes, we we're, we're based out of Detroit. And so we're kind Motor of like City. at the, yeah, we're at the epicenter of vehicles. So with the car, with the new car shortage, and the chip supply, you have to think about um, how many of those new cars people lease every year. Yeah. So in the Detroit area, and I'm sure out throughout the United States, everybody who drives a used car has a three-year-old car with 36,000 miles on it. That's in pretty good shape. Because they're lease turn-ins, right? Yeah. So they go through a lease turn-in process. They I know. go back to the same dealers. This is good, yeah. And they sell these cars as used cars. Imagine the used car market over like the next like three to five years. Like if you're a used car dealer, I mean, this is like, this is when you make money. If you have good ways of buying cars at auction and things like that, because the off lease turn-ins are, are going to be so few and far between. I know people right now that had a three-year lease and they're rounding into their fourth year. They got a 12-month extension on their leases because they can't find what they want. So that's a good point. So that's Isn't why the there's, there's nothing about? used, right? Because yeah, they're starting no in their cars. leases. Like, because you're right. You try to go get a new car right now, good luck. Yeah. You know? uh, they're like, okay, yeah, we can get you something like in 2024. Yeah. You want to know something else that's funny? So this is another side note. So we live in Detroit. Yep. So because the cars are manufactured, there's empty lots, like big parking lots, like where the Pistons used to play at the Palace. It's full of cars, right? It's Oh, my gosh. What happens is they're, they're, manu they're continuing to manufacture cars without chips, and then they just leave the plugs and when they're done, when the chips come in, they come in, they plug that computer in, they seal it up, they put the car out, and it goes to a lot. Yeah. So what happened is, because it was there's a lot of humidity in Michigan, it gets hot and cold, the connectors for the where they plug these chips in were rusting. Oh, no. They were worried about that. So they said, we got to go put something on them yeah. to prevent that. So they literally like let the security team go out and do this, and they used peanut oil. Mm. to to do that because it's like a an, an inexpensive way to do it well peanut oil like holds moisture or something and it rusted a bunch of the connections so now i've got to go back and replace the connections and add the chips later so we were on our way home from your house and we drove past there and yeah. goes all those cars need a chip i'm like yeah that's yeah. supply chain problems yeah and even now like the ones you buy that that have like the button for the heated seat yeah because they don't have the chips they're just like well we're gonna sell without the heated seats right 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 and right you're just not gonna have heated seats we're gonna have a heated seat button yeah so gonna... so what in you know as far as the mortgage market or the economy what do you think are you most interested to uh like what 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 are you what are you looking forward to the most to see what occurs in the next up and coming let's just call it two three four weeks from now like, what do you think would have the biggest impact? Is it the Fed meeting in March? Like, what, what needs to occur for um, things to, to change from where we're at? Whether that be interest rates going higher, lower, um, is there any big economic news that you're waiting on that will make an impact? So, yeah. So, I think that the jobs report for the end of February uh, will be really interesting, or for for February, which we'll get in the, the first Friday of March. Okay. Um, because the jobs numbers we got for December and January were really, really hot. The job, the January jobs number came back. It beat expectations by like 350,000 jobs. It's crazy. Um, and then they revised the December number way up from like 100,000 to like right. 700,000. But that is, uh, that's like a, a review of the entire year paired with census data. So it's not even like actual reporting. It's just like an it just adds to these numbers and the market yeah. took it for gospel, which it always does. And again, that means people, more people are going back to work. So a lot of people yeah. that hear that, like, oh, that's a good thing. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the markets hate it because that's right. worse for inflation. Right. Yeah. So I, I think it'll be interesting to see in March because we'll be done with adding those and doing the revisions and stuff like that. And we'll actually get to see what happened, which yeah. the jobs number should be pretty good because we're past the Omicron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? And uh, so I think that'll be an interesting number. I think it'll be, I think it'll be great for the Fed to just raise rates. That's like the band aid thing um one of the james bullard one of the head fed guys was like we need to raise rates without meeting about it we need to be able to do it on the fly that's true um, yeah 
which a lot, which really spooked the markets badly. I, I think it would be a good thing because I'm a big band aid ripper. Yeah. And you know, there's all kinds of spec, like, you know, like if you're swimming in a river and you get bit by an alligator and you have jeans on, you're only imagining how bad it could be. Right. And then yeah. you pull your jean up and you're like, Oh, it's just a little bit of bone. We can heal. So <laughs> sew this bad boy up, you know, like I, and I'm hoping that, that those, that's not going to rattle sellers loose, but I just, I feel like the way the market is right now, we did this two years ago where nobody wanted to sell because there was nowhere to go. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm waiting for something and that's I don't know what it now. is, something to just come up and like rattle it loose. Yeah. You know, kind of like your ice maker auger yeah, is yeah, like yeah. going oh, and going sellers. and then all of a sudden yeah. a bunch of ice comes out. Like I'm just waiting for something to rattle loose. That's like, okay, we're going to, here's some inventory. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know what that is. I, I, I have my like hunch on what that could be is if new, I mean, the, the pent up demand for new construction, like these builders are raring to go, you know, yeah. if they can get their hands on some lumber yeah. and specifically, here's what I think would really help the entire housing uh, inventory crisis. If builders can go crazy with ranch style, like um, condos, yeah. right. And all these baby boomers that want to move and they, yeah. all their houses are paid off and they're sitting on these gold mines yeah. and they can liquidate in the high, high prices right now, yeah. get into something one story, that would just free up so much inventory and you you will see a huge wave yeah. of new sales. I agree. And so I think we're close. I don't know. I want to look at maybe next show we can talk about it, but like the whole like lumber thing, I think is yeah. getting better. We talked about that two yeah. shows ago. Prices are coming down. Yeah. So if that happens and we can get new building underway, because that was predicted to be a big savior for housing inventory yeah. in 2022. Yeah. And so if that can happen, if these builders can like go like they yeah. want the way they want to go, which we'll see this spring or summer, I think you'll see a lot of inventory coming to the marketplace. And vacant summer. land prices are still right. pretty low. Yeah, they like are. Like they're not crazy high right now. Yeah. And I'm learning just as a uh, boots on the ground, like building a house, like, with picking out land, it is not easy. No, it's so hard. Like you need somebody to be like, no, this is a good lot. Yeah. You know, like it's not, it's not, it, and it, the land is not expensive. Yeah. Building is crazy, but the land's not. So I'm going to end with this. So our last two episodes ago, we talked about getting a uh, a shed house from Home Depot. Yeah. People really like that idea. Yeah. Did you see one person said, uh, this would be a great show for HGTV. Yeah, yeah. Two, 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 two suburban dads live yeah. in a forest. Yeah, <laughs> building our own shed house. That'd be so good. So what I want to do, and I'm going to publicly announce this so we're more committed to it. Yeah. We got to go to Home Depot and check one of these out. Okay. We'll just grab the phone, you know. And and do let's a little go. video? Yeah, 100%. Okay. All right, I'm down. So maybe we'll just do our next episode in one of those sheds, yeah. houses at Home Depot. Okay, do they have them there? Well, I'm going to find out. We'll go to okay, whatever yeah. one they do. All right. That sounds good. It'll be a good video. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, good stuff. If you guys have any questions about the economy, the housing market, mortgage interest rates, leave it in the comments. Uh, if you got any value from today in this conversation, subscribe. Please. You can always change your mind yeah. later. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for right. watching. Thanks.